Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 102, binary tree level order traversal. Instead of starting in the drawing board like we usually do, today we're going to start in the code editor. The reason I want to do it in reverse order is because the implementation for this problem is actually not very difficult. I want to show you the code first, and then we're going to go to the drawing board where I'm going to show you line by line why it works the way it does. The reason I'm doing this is because doing a level order traversal is a very common um, fundamental piece for a lot of tree based questions. And knowing how to do it and why it works is going to make it really easy for you to solve basically a lot of questions in the future. So that's why we're going to do it in the reverse order. So that being said, let's jump into the code. Let's write the code now. The first thing we want to do with pretty much every tree or graph based question is to actually check whether or not the root is given to us. If not, we can just return whatever the base case is. In this case, it's going to be an empty list. So let's do that. So if not root, we're going to return an empty list. Cool. So we're going to solve this problem using a breadth first search because that's typically how you're going to do a level order traversal. So let's define our queue to do that. So we're going to say queue equals collections dot deck. Um, and we're going to initialize the queue with the root. And we also need a result array to store our items here. So we need to process our tree level by level. So let's set up uh, our preliminary loop, which is going to be while queue. So while we still have something to process, we're going to say level items. So we're going to declare a variable that's going to store the items on a current level. And we're going to say for blank in range lang q. And basically what we're doing here is we're just iterating over the current level. And since we don't actually care about the index, we're just going to use a blank to indicate that we don't, we don't actually need the index value here. So we're going to say that our current node is going to be, we're going to pop from the left to the queue and we're going to get our node. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say level items dot append and here it wants node dot val uh, instead of just the node itself. And now what we're going to do is we're going to check, OK, does the current node have a left child? If it does, we need to append that left child to the queue um, node.left. And we're going to do the same thing for the right. So if node.right, we're going to say queue.append node.right. OK, so at this point, we've processed every single item on a level. And what we need to do before going to the next level which is going to be the next iteration of our while loop, we need to actually update our result by appending the level items. That way we can update it and get the correct answer in the end. So we're going to return the result at the end, and that should be our solution. So let's submit it and make sure that it works. And it does. OK, excellent. Before we go, let's talk about the time and space complexity of our algorithm here. So we know that we need to parse every single node in the tree because we need to return it um, as part of our result. So in terms of time complexity, we have to go through the entirety of the tree. So it's going to be an O of n solution, right? We're going to visit every single node once and only once. So therefore, it's going to be an O of n solution. And for the space, similarly, we're going to be storing the value of every single node in the tree. Um, so this is going to be O of n as well. So quite simple here. This is really the best you can do for level order traversal. Um, it's just going to be O of n on the time, O of n on the space. So that's how you code it using a breadth first search um, to perform the level order traversal. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the drawing board and I'm actually going to show you how the level order traversal works uh, in terms of you know parsing through the queue uh, with this while loop and then the nested for loop because it is a little bit confusing the first time you see it and I think it's helpful to visualize it um, not in code but actually just on you know on the drawing board so that you can see how it's done. So let's go over there. Let's go through it line by line and double check that our implementation works. You may think this is a silly exercise, but realistically, in a real interview, your interviewer is going to want to know that you can walk through your solution line by line and explain your logic. So this is a good habit to get into, being able to explain every single line of your solution and why it works the way it does. It's going to show to your interviewer that you didn't just memorize leak code solutions and that you actually thoroughly understand how things are implemented and why things work the way they do. So that being said, the first part of our problem is checking that the root is non empty. So we can just skip over that part and we'll actually go to the part where we define our queue and initialize it um, with our root. So we're going to say that the queue is going to be storing this node, which uh, we see from the diagram is going to be three, which is going to be our root, right? So while we have a queue, which we do because the queue is not empty, we're going to say that our current level items is going to be an empty list, right? 
And what we're going to do is we're going to say, OK, so for blank in range len q, what is the length of the q? It is 1. So we're going to have, you know, 4 i in range 1. So that means that we're going to iterate, you know, one time only, right? So what we're going to do is we have this line here, right? We're going to pop from the q. So that way our current node is going to equal this node 3 here. So we've removed this node from the q. And we want to append its value to the current level items. And let's actually define something for our global result here. Um, so our level items is going to have the value 3, right? Because we're putting node.val. Now, does this 3 have a left child? Yes, it does. We can see it has this node 9 here. So we're going to append the queue that left, right? So we're going to put 9 in there, the node 9. And does this node 3 have a right child? Yes, it does. It has this 20, right? So we're going to put that into the queue. So we put that into the queue. And now this for loop terminates because we only had to iterate one time. So now all we have to do is append to our result this level items. So that way, result is now going to store this list containing three. Great. So we you know, have finished this iteration here. So we go back to the top of the while loop. Is our queue empty? No, it's not. So that means we still have another level to process. As you can see, we now have 9 and 20, which is the next level. And then level items is going to get reset because we set it back, right? So it's going to be empty again. And we're going to do for blank in range len q. So what's the length of q? It's going to be 9 and 20. So you're probably wondering why exactly we have this. Well, what happens when we pop the 9, right? We can see that the 9 doesn't have any children. But if it did, we would potentially add them to the q, which would mean that you know our if we just processed while the queue was empty, uh, while was, the queue was not empty, then we would overrun our level because then we would process, you know, whatever nine children were. And we just want to constrict it to the actual current uh, nodes on the level, which are nine and 20. So the reason we do, you know, this for loop inside is to keep it um, bound on only the amount of elements that were in there when we started. Uh, traversing for that level because as we go we're gonna be adding things to the queue so we want to make sure we only process the amount of items that were in that level when we started the processing for that level so let's continue with our example so um, you know we're processing the queue so we're gonna iterate twice through the queue because there's two items here and we're gonna pop um, you know our value from the left so we're gonna remove this 9 from the queue and our current node is going to be the 9 right so what do we do? So we want to append its value to our current level items. So we're going to put 9 in there. And we're going to check, OK, does 9 have a left child? No, it doesn't. Does it have a right child? No, it doesn't. So in this case, we don't have to update a queue with anything. Now we go to our second iteration of this for loop, which is going to be also the last one. And we're going to pop the 20 from the queue. So we pop the 20 from the queue. Bam. OK, so we want to append the value of 20 to our level items. And what we want to do, OK, does 20 have a left child? Yes, it does. So let's add its left child to the queue, which is going to be this node 15. And does it have a right child? Yes, it does. It's this node with value 7. Cool. So we've now processed this level entirely because we finished our for loop here. And what we need to do is simply append to our result the current level item. So now we're going to add 920. Cool. So. We now go through our while loop again because the queue is still not empty. So this gets reset. And OK, there's two elements to process. So we're going to process them in this for loop. And then we pop from the left. So we're going to get this 15 here. Uh, we're going to add its value to our current level items. And does left have a, oh, sorry, does the node 15 have a left child? No, it doesn't. Does it have a right child? No, it doesn't. So that means that we don't add anything to the queue. Cool. So we process this node. So we can actually remove it from our queue here. The next thing we need to do is you know, go through our for loop again. And we again pop from the left of the queue. So we're going to pop this 7. Oops. We're going to pop the 7. And cool. So now we can add the value of 7 to our level items. And we can check. OK, does 7 have a left child? No, it doesn't. Does 7 have a right child? No, it doesn't. OK, so that means there's nothing to add to our queue. So now our queue is empty. So we finished, we've exhausted the for loop. So now all we need to do is add to our result the level items. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to add 15 and 7 to our result. And now our queue is empty. So that means when we go back to the while loop, we're going to see that our queue is empty. So that means we don't go into the while loop again. So that means we have fully processed our entire tree and we can simply return our result, which is going to be, you know, the list three, the list 920, and then the list 15, seven. And then actually I'm missing a bracket here, which we can see is the, you know, correct answer. So this is how you do a level order traversal of a binary tree using breadth first search. If you didn't quite understand that, go back and watch it again, because this is a very important concept that comes up a lot in a lot of leak code questions. And you're probably going to encounter this in an on-site interview. Um, knowing how to do depth first search and breadth first search to a tree is something that you're going to need to know memorized how to do it. You don't want to be thinking about it. Um, you should just know this is how you do the traversal and it should just come to you without thinking. Uh, I would definitely memorize how to do this and the structure of it. Um, each question will have its own twist on what you need to do with the nodes, how you add them to the queue. Maybe you do the right child first, maybe you do the left child first, or you do some, something else, but the structure is always going to be the same, right? While you have a queue to process, and then you're going to be iterating over the items in that current level. So take the time to understand how this works and take the time to actually memorize just the core skeleton of doing a level order traversal using breadth first search. You'll thank me later when it comes up on an interview and you weren't wasting time. Okay, how do I do this breath first search? Oh, what do I do here? It should just come to you naturally. You should just be able to go uh, the second you realize, okay, breath first search binary tree. This is how That's I do how you're going to do a level order traversal through a binary tree. Like I said, the approach is quite simple, although it's going to be one that you basically need to have memorized because of how ubiquitous it is in leak code problems and most likely in your on site interview. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to check out my other videos. Happy coding!